Hello class, welcome back. Uh, in this video, I want to spend a couple of minutes to kind of talk about the two new accounts that we just learned, which is CIP and its Contra account. Uh, CIP is construction in progress, and its Contra account is called billings in cons on construction contract. Now, remember, uh, we have the following uh, journal entry to recognize revenue and cost. And then we'll use the difference, put it in CIP accounts. Now, we have a CIP account, which then not only have the cost, but also the difference. Uh, if it is a positive number, which means revenue is greater than cost, uh, we call it gross profit. And it will be on the left-hand side of the CIP accounts. Uh, therefore, you know, it's just so happened that these three years, uh, the, the, the gross profit is a positive. So it's not gross loss, it's gross profit. We're going to put it on the left-hand side, debit CIP. Now, the fifth 1.5 uh, and then this 1 million uh, and then the 1.6, this is the actual cost occurred, right? Now, on the right-hand side, the billings on construction contract, we store the bill, the, right? The, the amount we bill the clients. And the counter account is, um, you know, we will debit accounts receivable and then credit this billing on construction contracts. Uh, well, and then you see, you know, 2021, we build 1.2, it ends at 1.2. 2022, we build another 2 million, you know, the ending balance for 2022 is 3.2. Eventually, we come up to 5 million. What is 5 million? 5 million is the revenue, is the amount that our client will pay us. Hmm? It so happened that the left-hand side is also 5 million in the end, right, upon cons uh, completion. It is designed on purpose because the CIP account uh, stores the cost, right? The highlighted numbers are the cost incurred. The red one is the gross profit. Cost plus gross profit, of course, equals revenue. Uh, well, that's why in the end of the project, we will have the CIP balance equals its contract account balance. Uh, and both of them equals the revenue, total revenue. Right? Now, let me close the contracts. So when Harden, the company, uh, delivered, you know, the building uh, to the clients, the job is finished. The only one thing that left is to close the accounts. Close what accounts? Close the previous two accounts. I said before, these two are temporary accounts. So after the completion of the project, they should be gone. Right now, the CIP account have a left-hand side balance of 5 million and the billings account have a right-hand side balance of 5 million. So we just switch the debit credit, make them to zero, right? I'm gonna credit, which is the right-hand side for CIP for 5 million and then do the opposite for the billings account. And I will do it when the project is completed. Now, this is going to be the same, no matter you are using overtime recognition or wait until the completion of the contracts. We will still do the same thing to close accounts uh, at the end of the, you know, the, the project. Now, let's compare these two. Uh, the first one is revenue recognition upon completion, which means we don't recognize any revenue during the pro progress. Uh, but for the second one is over time, we do it step by step according to the percentage of completion method, right? Now, this red numbers for revenue is calculated using the method percentage of completion. Uh, when you sum these three up, undoubtedly, it must equal $5 million. Uh, and also, over time, we will also uh, record the cost which is an expense, and then we have a CIP, right, that's to store the gross profit, the difference between these two. Now, compare the revenue, you know, vertically. Over time, we have the red numbers, 
and upon completion, we don't have anything for you know, 2021 and 2022. We only have a lump sum of $5 million at the end, which is 2023. But of course, when you sum them up, the total revenue should be the same because accounting is just a form of presentation. It doesn't really affect your actual benefit, right? Uh, so when we do revenue recognition upon the completion, we still use the two temporary accounts, CIP and the contract account, uh, but instead of also storing the difference between the revenue and cost, we only store the actual construction cost. See, in 2021, we only have 1.5 million. Well, before, right, we have 1.5 and we also have this $500,000, $500, which is the gross profit. But now we only have 1.5. And as you see, we don't have any gross profit between 2021 and 2022, but we have a lump sum. How do I calculate the lump sum? Uh, first of all, I know the revenue is $5 million. I need the ending balance before closing to be $5 million. And I sum these up. I got $4.1 million. So I need to record the difference, which is $900,000. On the right side, we see, you know, uh, we still do the same because whichever method you use upon completion or recognize revenue over time, it doesn't affect my billing schedule to the clients. So the billings is totally unaffected because it's totally different things, right? Uh, so, Let's go back. This is over time. This is upon completion. The difference is how to recognize gross profit. You do it here by the end when you are using upon the completion. But for over time, you recognize the gross profit really over time. Now, this also creates another problem because when we look at the, um, you record the gross profit, right? And now if I look at, let me use another color, the ending balance. Uh, I have a 2 million here. I have a 1.2 here, which is fine. And then if I look at the ending balance in 2022, I have a 3.125 million dollars in CIP, but I have a 3.2 million dollars on the contract account. So that means when we let, net it out, right? Because um, this in total, they are an asset account, but my kind of the growth, the big branch is 3.1 to five and the contra is 3.2. So when I net it out, it's a negative number, right? So here I have a negative number. while well, here is a positive number, right? 2 minus 1.2 is 800. And here it is a 75, right? How am I going to do this? How should I report it in the balance sheet when you have a negative asset account? Well, we created another account. Turn out, you know, we can do this. So in the balance sheet, we would not have CIP or billing. We don't show these two accounts in the balance sheet. Instead, we show the net and we call it a different name. On 20, in 2021, when we have a positive number, right? Um, 2 million and 1.2, I'm going to have a, uh, this is over time. This is what we are going to do we will have a cost and profit in excess of billing. And we record a difference, which is $800,000 here in the current asset side. Now, in 2022, when we have a negative 75 of the difference, which is 3.125 and 3.2, we're gonna put the $75,000 as current liabilities and we call it a different names. 
In this case, the billing, the contract account is greater than the CIP account. So I will call it billings in excess of cost and profits. And I put it in the uh, current liability side. So you see, you know, whether you will have a current asset or current liability accounts totally depend on the net of these two accounts. And we only report these two accounts here. Uh, you know, the, the net, we will not show CIP or the billing account separately. Uh, well, and it, how about doing it the uh, upon completion way? Well, when we do upon completion, there's really no uh, gross profit, right? So we call it a different name. Uh, before we have a cost and profit, and now we're gonna have a, just call it cost. And then cost, uh, you know, in 2021, let's go back here. In 2021, we have 1.5 million. This is upon the completion. And billing is 1.2, so it's a positive 300. In 2022, uh, CIP is 2.5, but uh, while well, the billing is 3.2, then there is a negative, how much? 700. We will still do the same. So here's what we do for upon completion. 2021 positive 300, uh, we call the current asset account as cost in excess of billings. 2022, we have a negative amount we create a current liability account and then we switch the order of the names. We call it billings in excess of cost is $700,000. So it's really flexible. And bottom line, you don't show CIP or the contract, you just show the net. So that's it, that's what I have to do with um, all I have to talk about for the uh, CIP and the contract accounts. Uh, well, it's not really hard to understand, isn't it? Now, next, we're gonna deal with the loss situation. I'll see you in the next video.